We are continuing with um, with Second Samuel. We are in chapter nineteen, and and so if we do this correctly, we should have two of these left. All right, so two two of these left, um, and hopefully my kind of goal is to get through twenty and twenty one, maybe twenty two, but twenty two really kind of has to do with the end, and then and then twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. Or all about the end of the book, and the end of the book has a definite different ending than the rest. It's kind of this summary, and and so we're kind of closing out. We're probably kind of closing out the story of of David, of David today. So that's what that's what we'll be doing. So so um, so if you remember, like David with all the Bathsheba stuff, and there's this gross picture of David wearing a giant crown. And he's got slaves making bricks, which is uh, which is very like that. That's like that. That's one of those things that if you just read it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's not that bad. That makes sense. But when you like look at it in the whole totality of everything, you're like, hmm, that's not good. And then uh, right after that, uh, his daughter Tamar is raped by his brother by by David's other son. And David doesn't really do anything about it. I think that kind of shows some, um, uh, like, when trauma hits our family, sometimes we just kind of, like, we take a back seat to doing doing things that maybe we should. And I think we see that in a lot of families around us. And and you kind of you see that with David. That then, because David didn't do anything about that, uh, activates Absalom and Absalom comes in and becomes a thorn in the side of, of, uh, David and, um, David, uh, he, he doesn't want to, by the reading of this, there was some discussion about it last week. And by the reading of this, uh, he does not, uh, really seem like he wants to kill Absalom and, uh, Absalom gets caught by his hair in the tree and, is it Joab mm-hmm. is who kills him? All right. Cause we have more with Joab here in chapter 19. Joab runs him through and, and um, David begins mourning Absalom. And so, um, you know, he's, he's like Absalom. Oh, oh my Absalom. And, uh, and so we will continue on with the, with the story here uh, in chapter 19, Absalom has died and, and, um, run through by run through by Joab and Joab is at the is here at the beginning of chapter 19 so let's see what kind of wisdom he has for David and and everything that that he, that he is doing let's see do do we have to remember what happened right behind right before this um okay yeah so basically David just found out that that Absalom died okay all right, so we, we'll share the screen. We'll do share sound, optimize for video, and hit this button. And Midgetad, let me know if it keeps on after a couple seconds doing the big echo thing. And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard it said that day, The king is grieved for his son. And the people stole back into the city that day, as people who are ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried out with a loud voice, Oh, my son, Absalom! Oh, Absalom, my son! My son! Then Joab came into the house to the king, Today, you have disgraced all your servants, who today have saved your life, the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives, and the lives of your concubines, in that you love your enemies and hate your friends. For you have declared today that you regard neither princes nor servants. For today, I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died today, that it would have pleased you well. Now, therefore, arise. Go out and speak comfort to your servants. 
for I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, not one will stay with you this night. And that will be worse for you than all the evil that has befallen you from your youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told all the people, There is the king, sitting in the gate. So all the people came before the king, for every one of Israel had fled to his tent. Now all the people were in a dispute throughout all the tribes of Israel. The king saved us from the hand of our enemies. He delivered us from the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing back the king? So King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house, since the words of all Israel have come to the king to his very house? You are my brethren. You are my bone and my flesh. Why, then, are you the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? God, do so to me, and more also, if you are not commander of the army before me continually in place of Joab. So he swayed the hearts of all the men of Judah, just as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word to the king. Return, you and all your servants. Then the king returned and came to the Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to escort the king across the Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gira, a Benjamite, who was from Behurim, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. There were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they went over the Jordan before the king. Then a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. Now Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king when he had crossed the Jordan. Do not let my lord impute iniquity to me, or remember what Ron your servant did on the day that my lord the king left Jerusalem, that the king should take it to heart. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned. Therefore, here I am, the first to come today of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should be adversaries to me today? Shall any man be put to death today in Israel? For do I not know that today I am king over Israel? Therefore the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king swore to him. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he returned in peace. So it was, when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame and he has slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God. Therefore do what is good in your eyes, for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. 
yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore, what right have I still to cry out any more to the king? Why do you speak any more of your matters? I have said you and Ziba divide the land. Rather, let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. And Barzillai, the Gileadite, came down from Rogalim and went across the Jordan with the king to escort him across the Jordan. Now Barzillai was a very aged man, eighty years old and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed at mere name, for he was a very rich man. And the king said to Barzillai, Come across with me, and I will provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. How long have I to live that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am today eighty years old. Can I discern between the good and bad? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be a further burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way across the Jordan with the king, and why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant turn back again, that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord the king and do for him what seems good to you. Kimham shall cross over with me and I will do for him what seems good to you. Now whatever you request of me, I will do for you. Then all the people went over the Jordan. And when the king had crossed over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own place. Now the king went on to Gilgal, and Kimham went on with him. And all the people of Judah escorted the king, and also half the people of Israel. Just then all the men of Israel came to the king. Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen you away and brought the king, his household, and all David's men with him across the Jordan? So all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is a close relative of ours. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we ever eaten at the king's expense? Or has he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, we have ten shares in the king. Therefore, we also have more right to David than you. Why then do you despise us? Were we not the first to advise bringing back our king? Yet the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Okay. All right. Got, got some divided kingdom, like foreshadowing going on there a little bit right there at the end all right so what stood out to you it's a long chapter like that's and this this chapter kind of kind of reminds me of all, all i say this a lot but all those like like shows about uh knights and and medieval things and like people are making treaties and like all all that stuff it also kind of like the the prequels to Star Wars. It kind of has that kind of feeling to it too, yeah. But but uh, yeah. So it kind of stood out to you here. There's a couple things that are very interesting. They seem fickle. Fickle? Like yeah, who, who seems they fickle? They did a 180. They did a 180. <laughs> the people first they were going after Absalom when he gave them all these great things, and now they're back to David or oh yeah. Be. Oh yeah. Well, they kind of they kind of lost. They kind of yeah. they kind of. They kind of lost, and and uh, it's not good to just be by yourself with these, with the with these with these things. You gotta choose the winner. You gotta, yeah. And it's interesting David's response to them. David's response, like what, what, what did you guys think of David's response to these people coming back? No, I think it was a basically he had to in a way because he didn't want the kingdom to be split anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We had to bring everybody back to him. Yeah. It's very Davidic in his style too. It's it it looks 
very similar to what he did in in uniting the kingdom after Saul died. So when when Saul died, he he is like, yeah, listen, I know you're against me, but he just it's a good politician. Yeah, yeah, just just yeah. bring it in, just bring it in uh, anyway. Which and and like you say, it's good politician. Lee was in here like 30 minutes before we started, and she kept muddling that to herself. Because <laughs> <laughs> she was reading it. She was reading it. <laughs> she was reading it. Honey, so why I don't have to remind people off a dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, so that's, but, uh, but yeah, like that good, good, good politician. And, um, and, but like we see that there's, like throughout history, and I, especially reading, this book there that there's a lot of times there isn't such good politicians going on people harbor grudges and you know, we kind of see that that ended up being kind of the downfall of Saul is that he was you know you know who is really for him and who is not and uh and so like yeah that's that's kind of kind of good politician stuff there all right what what else you're saying yeah. politicians don't hold grudges yeah yeah well that's <laughs> we're saying if you want to say news, we're, we're, we're saying good <laughs> Good politician, oh, I like that. That good, good, good there, right? Well, and that's and that that should tell us something. And that's why I said it's kind of a Davidic style, that that's kind of what he does, and kind of what he's good at, and uh, and and so. But we're still seeing kind of the downfall, especially there at the end of nineteen, with like Judah versus Israel. Like that's definitely for some foreshadowing. It's going to happen. During the reign of Solomon, after this, you know, you have the northern and the southern kingdoms, Judah versus the rest of Israel, basically divide and become separate, separate kingdoms. And so, so like there's there's definitely some foreshadowing going on there. So uh, what what else kind of what kind else kind of stood out to you? I have a question on verse 24 and mine. It says Mahindosheth was the grandson of Saul, and the one we just read, the NIV said he was the son of Saul. Um, I don't know which is right. So, so, um, 24. yeah. So, so from chapter nine of second Samuel, this is when we first meet Moshiba, Seth or whatever, whatever like that. Yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Him. Yeah. And, uh, we, we first meet, we first meet him and it goes out. Is there anyone left in the house of Saul? Uh, that is going over there. Sons, grandsons, they probably don't. I, I, I don't remember how it's translated, but it, it may be a little ambiguous type of type of thing. I wouldn't worry about it too much. He's in the line of Saul, though, which means he's in a kingly line. Yeah. And and David showed kindness to him because he's he's crippled too, isn't he? He's a yeah, 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 yeah. And so they were escaping. What happened? The nursemaid that was taken in oh, the king, the remember she dropped them and yeah. yeah. I wonder if she lost her hands. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like who was the one he's one that wanted to divide the kingdom with the grandson. Now, who is that guy? Is he of of some relative of Saul's, where he says uh, split the king of Saul's uh, assets up between the two? What, were you talking in this chapter or yeah, yeah, chapters yeah. before? Where 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 is that? <laughs> Oh, where is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. I forgot where I saw it now. Let's see. Oh, mine don't work so good anymore. <laughs> well, I'm asking where it is, so I don't, I don't know if I'm doing much better. Um, let's see, where? where? I'm 29. 29? Yeah, 29. So that is about, so the king said to him, why? Use this Bible and I can't hardly see it. <laughs> Um, um. Yeah, it's a uh, verse twenty nine. The king said, "Or Ziba, who's who's Ziba is? He said, he said he would you would Ziba to divide Sorry. the land yeah. on twenty nine." Let me see. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I don't have. I don't have. Back in chapter nine, it explains a little bit of this. Yeah. Nine two says there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. There you go. And then also in that same chapter, uh, verse six, it says. Fifth both chef <laughs> was a son son of Jonathan, so that would make him the grandson. Okay. The, yeah. the Jewish Bible says Mahithashef was grandson of Saul. Okay. So he's Jonathan's son. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So that's so it'd make him. So he's in the line. He's also in De, in Jonathan's line. You know, and and uh, it's yeah, like, chapter nine, verse one. Yes. You know, he says like to, to show kindness for Jonathan's sake. We'll yeah. we'll we'll do this. Who's that Ziba guy. Then where is he fitting? He, he's he's mentioned all at the beginning of that chapter nine. Oh yeah, he's yeah. servant of the house. And I bet it's like, I bet it's his, like his guy that has to watch over. He was more like a guardian, but why would yeah. he give him anything from Saul? I just couldn't understand that. It's, um, it's, uh, I think he's, he's, I think he's just kind of talking. It's like, you guys go do, do with, with what you will over here. Kind of. my, my footnote on nine two says that Ziba was the chief steward of Saul's estate, okay. which had been inherited by Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, Saul's firstborn. Yeah. So, so he's kind of gotten some land and all that. It's it and connected to all of this is the state of of his feet. Yeah. yeah. Like that's so. Which I think they're trying to say there is that he's really. You know, because he's lame, he can't walk. He's really not being cared for at, at all during during this battle, and um, which is which, which I don't know. Do we have any thoughts on why he may not have been cared for during this time? Do we have any thoughts about what could be going on around there? Because that's that takes some pretty big prominence. Yeah. Well, isn't it isn't it normally the belief that something was wrong with you it was because you had sinned yeah like that's yeah but he but i think it this wasn't like boring yeah like i don't think it has anything to do because it's not boring because it talks about how he fell i it this really seems like and it could be saying something like because i really don't know and i don't have none of my notes say anything but but it's it just seems like he's just not being cared for. Maybe he thought he was cursed because he fell was strong, well, maybe, maybe. And they spend a lot of time um on that. And uh but I think kind of the point is is that is that David is still remembering him. And and even though we can tell that he's that he's really not able to care for himself well that 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 david still he doesn't just run him through yeah well back in uh, chapter 16 that ziba guy yeah he brought all this food and stuff to uh david okay when they were going yeah we're traveling if you read uh, okay part of 16 it does amazing okay sorry happen. so he's been kind of a loyalist to david the whole time Actually, yeah. he's playing both ends. Too. Is he yeah. playing both ends? Yeah, yeah. real cynicism. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing both sides. Because there's a lot of these guys that play both sides. Yeah. It's like, let's see how this works out. Yeah, yeah I'll be. Like, that's, I I just watched I just watched a little news special about what's going on in the Sudan right now, and and that's that's really what what has caused a lot of. There's like the UAE is really big involved in all that mess and Libya, and they're both giving money to both sides and so that they can be in good, whoever wins that that battle, like like that's it's like oh like that's disgusting, yeah, like that that's so it's it still happens to this day, you know like that like that's yeah you know, like you see it constantly, and uh, or where people just play off it's like ah uh, whoever wins, well, uh, diplomacy in a diplomacy yeah. yeah. So um, let's let's go back and look at the beginning of the chapter real quick. So David is grieving for everyone, and, and everyone goes from celebrating, like shooting off the fireworks and the parade happening, and they all go back to their homes. Like that that's and Joab, who killed Absalom, is not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. And he kind of tells David what for because because of it he says david it's it's like would you have been happy if absalom lived like like that's and uh and and so and he basically tells david it's like go do your job and which david's job that's that whole sitting at the at the gate because they would where we think of like medieval kings you know you'd come into the court like they would sit outside by the gate and that's where they would do their judgments and 
all, all, all that stuff and, and should be king. And, um, and so he's like, go, go do your job. Um, and then David does it. But what, what Joab is it? killed the son. That never comes up to in here at all. Yeah. That Joab killed Absalom. It never comes up again, but yeah, it's. I mean, I mean, here's this guy who killed him and he was told not to kill him and he yeah. killed him. And now he's telling the king what to do. Yeah. Yeah, like this I mean, is. That kind the king of... is playing father. He's thinking oh, that that was my son. No matter what he did, he still. Yeah, uh, I think that's the hat he was wearing. Yeah, but I mean, he was that upset. He didn't say Joanne said. Well, well, I mean, things, everybody things, has to kill somebody. Take things are different now. I think this is this is what I want to point out. Is things are different now. What happened to the guy who killed Saul? Do you, do you remember? Yeah, he got. They brought the news and they killed him. Yeah. Now that that's the sermon that we have for this Sunday, and there's an interesting detail about that. Do you remember where that guy was from? That killed Saul, and they came and announced it to David. Do you remember? No. Yeah, yeah. It's because we don't think about this. He was an Amalekite. He was an Amalekite. Remember that was the Amalekites is who God told Saul to kill all these Amalekites. Oh, wow. But, but uh, kill all these Amalekites. And then he didn't do it. And Samuel was like, I hear the blaying of the sheep. Yeah. But yeah. but Saul had no problem killing all the priests. Yeah. All, all, all the priests, that, that, that whole town yeah. of the priests, utterly destroying them. And then it's an Amalekite that, that actually comes to David. Which, this is interesting, poetic, like, storytelling going on here. That this Amalekite, who didn't kill, he just announced that you know, the Saul fell on the sword, and he just announces it to David. And the Amalekite's kind of expecting David to give him a reward, probably. And David kills him, right? Which is kind of like David's killing the Amalekite. Like, all that stuff wouldn't have happened if Saul had, like, but, yeah, unfinished business. Unfinished business. But that's how David dealt with that. He did it to a few people that we're trying to take credit for killing Saul. Yeah. And we get here now, and he's almost like a scared boy with Joab. That's how I read it. I don't know if that's right or not. Like that's, but he's like, like Joab, and I know I know you have your theory that like David's happy that, that Absalom is dying, which is which is interesting if it if falls in line with this too. I would say happy. Happy is not the right word, yeah, yeah. Relieved, more yeah, than yeah, 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 over his kingdom, and and it's it's interesting how he responds to Joab, and and it's what what's I think David has his Davidic understanding of of how all this is supposed to work. Joab is telling what he already knows, yeah, but but he still does the oh my Absalom stuff. And and I think we see that David is completely conflicted, and I, and I think we see since the story of Bathsheba, we see David is just he's not he's not he's not the same guy that he was before. He's not the same guy who unified everyone. He still has some of that stuff that we see, you know. He still shows kindness to Moshebas. Yeah. Yeah, we know. And uh, uh, and and you pass a yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Uh huh. Like yeah, anyone that ever reads in front of everyone, if you come across a name, just do your best and keep on going. <laughs> like no one else, no one is judging. <laughs> no one is judging. And uh, and so, but that's. But that's interesting. Like, there's not, there's. It doesn't seem like like David has that same conviction that he had around, around Saul, because David has always been about kind of love of enemy and and all that stuff. And we see some of that coming coming through here in the rest of this chapter. But it's not the same. It's not the same. Is it? Isn't it also because the note here says that Je Joab accuses David of ingratitude. To his loyal follower. Yeah, yeah. So you got half the guy saying, "Hey, we we supported you. Where's our uh, where's our take?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's trying to make peace with Benjamites. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's yeah, it, it's it's definitely it's definitely part of it. It's definitely part of it, and and um, 
you know, without, without seeking gratitude. But David also didn't care at the beginning of first sin, at the beginning of second sin. He didn't care. Like he's like, no, we're going to treat Saul's descendants with honor. Yeah. Like that. He didn't care what people thought. He didn't care about the power. He didn't care about about all of that because they're just sending it's changed him now. But but it's different now. And I think that's that's a key point as you're kind of listening to it. It's like, ooh, I don't. This doesn't this doesn't sound the same. It, David doesn't have the same power or gravitas that he once did. Yeah, type of type of thing. You have a concerned face on you. Like that's. Is there a chance that David didn't know that Joab killed Absalom? Oh, because um, I don't see anywhere where anybody's telling him that. Yeah, on my note, I just read my note of um, uh, 95. Um, apparently, confident the king was unaware of his part in Absalom's death. Okay, so that's so. Again, again, no, it's just not showing. The, the 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 divinic yeah divinic yeah like that's he, I'm gonna kill you because you killed my son yeah he's he's just he's not showing that and he doesn't have you can tell he doesn't have control over what's going on around him like he once did like yeah the grief is what clued me in this that maybe he didn't really know yeah and then, yeah again that and I think that shows kind of the same thing where he's still. David's not in the same control that he once was. You know, that's... That I have, for verse 24, said the traitor's story. Mm -hmm. The Fishabeth, I call him Mr. M. Yeah. <laughs> Third Ziba had told David that the M guy was a traitor with dream that he, as Saul's grandson, would be made king. Hearing this, David had given Ziba, that's from chapter 16, 1 through mm -hmm. 4, David had given Ziba all of the M guy's property. Now we hear the M guy's side of the story. He claimed that Ziba had betrayed him, presumably taking his donkey, so he, a cripple, could not follow David. Mm. More convincing than his words was his appearance. I don't remember seeing that in there. He had not washed himself or trimmed mm. his mustache. Yeah. Looked as though he had been mourning, not grooming himself for the throne. Did David believe him? Perhaps not completely, but he orders Ziba to give back half, not so, all. So, property. so that it's interesting how it mentions that that could have been a sign for mourning, like him not taking yeah. care of himself. Yeah. yeah, like that. That's that could have been that too. Yeah, that could be a sign of mourning. So, um, well, good, good deal. Is there anything else from this this chapter? The donkey was used again. Yeah, the donkey. <laughs> With the dog. <laughs> like, 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 in a, yes. like that is, is the oh the donkeys oh the donkeys <laughs> they um that's funny that's funny that that is the animal of my ministry is the donkeys like that's always always there's the they're involved that's not what the Jewish part yeah yeah, yeah. are they mules right. uh, uh, oh yeah 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 as the yeah. well that's with well, that too, that too. So, but um, it, it's, I think it's very important though, the last verse of 19 though, like yet the the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Like you're seeing there's a division and that's, and, and that, that that's, that that's coming. So, all right, let's do chapter 20. Let's do chapter 20. Here we are. And there happened to be there a rebel whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no share in David, nor do we have inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, O Israel. So every man of Israel deserted David and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah, from the Jordan as far as Jerusalem, remained loyal to their king. Now David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in seclusion, and supported them, but did not go into them. So they were shut up to the day of their death, 
living in widowhood. And the king said to Amasa, Assemble the men of Judah for me within three days, and be present here yourself. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah. But he delayed longer than the set time which David had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba, the son of Bichri, will do us more harm than Absalom. Take your lord's servants and pursue him, lest he find for himself fortified cities and escape us. So Joab's men, with the Kerathites, the Pelethites, and all the mighty men, went out after him. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue Sheba the son of Bichri. When they were at the large stone which is in Gibeon, a mesa came before them. Now Joab was dressed in battle armor. On it was a belt, with a sword fastened in its sheath at his hips. And as he was going forward, it fell out. Then Joab said to Amasa, Are you in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa did not notice the sword that was in Joab's hand, and he struck him with it in the stomach, and his entrails poured out on the ground, and he did not strike him again. Thus he died. Then Joab and Abishai his brother pursued Sheba the son of Bichri. Meanwhile, one of Joab's men stood near Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, follow Joab. But Amasa wallowed in his blood in the middle of the highway. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he moved Amasa from the highway to the field and threw a garment over him when he saw that everyone who came upon him halted. When he was removed from the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue Sheba the son of Bichri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel and Bethmeacher and all the Berites. So they were gathered together and also went after Sheba. Then they came and besieged him in Abel of Bethmeacher and they cast up a siege mound against the city, and it stood by the rampart. And all the people who were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then a wise woman cried out from the city, Here, here, please say to Joab, Come nearby that I may speak with you. When he had come near to her, the woman said, Are you Joab? I am. Hear the words of your maidservant. I am listening. They used to talk in former times, saying, They shall surely seek guidance at Abel, and so they would end disputes. I am among the peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? Far be it. Far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not so. But a man from the mountains of Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name, has raised his hand against the king, against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. Watch. His head will be thrown to you over the wall. Then the woman, in her wisdom, went to all the people, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and threw it out to Joab. Then he blew a trumpet, and they withdrew from the city, every man to his tent. So Joab returned to the king at Jerusalem, and Joab was over all the army of Israel. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Kerathites and the Pelathites. Adon was in charge of revenue. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, was recorder. Shiva was scribe. Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira, the Jairite, was a chief minister under David. 
What's the difference between a recorder and a scribe? I don't, I don't know. Well, a scribe would have been more along the lines of like the text and writing down. Recorder was probably um, what well, says to the battle or something. The note taker. No, yeah. Well, it says revenue too. So who knows? Maybe he played it. Like this is all. This is all stuff that's we could figure it out. <laughs> but the <laughs> that's it. Then. The um. All right, so who was a Massa? But do you remember? He was at the beginning of the chapter. Like that's I'm trying to it didn't give me any clues. Seventeen let's see. It says he's from seventeen twenty five. What before? He replaces Joab as commander. Oh, okay. All right, so so he replaced Joab as commander. Nineteen so, uh, fourteen. So so Joab killed his competition. Right. Is which is un like is which is the opposite of what we see David doing at the beginning. Like 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 that's and, and as see kind of as you know acting out as they're not their best selves. So so what uh, what stood out to you in this in this chapter? There's, there's a line in here that convinces me yeah. that David wanted his son dead. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go back, way back to when he first says, don't touch my son. Yeah. And then there's the line there that he made the comment in front of all the soldiers. Okay. Now that sounds... It's more to me like, see, I'm telling him, don't touch him. Yeah. You know, he's already wiping his hands of the deed. Yeah. Okay. And now he turns around and says, now Sheba will cause us more trouble than Absalom. Mm. That doesn't sound like, oh, my son, oh, my son. Yeah. So I think the, oh, my son, oh, my son was the put on. The, uh, what verse is the, the one in chapter 20? Yes. Six. Verse six. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he'll call it causes more problems than. Yeah. So take than, your uh, servants, find him. You know. Sheba is in the line of Saul. Yes. By, by the way, like he's in the, he's in the line of Saul. Like he's in the genie. He's like a grandson. Um and so, like a pick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's so so like that's. So, so that, that's, and, and I think, you know, I think again, we see that things are, that David is different now. Like he's, he's way different and he's, he's, he's not responding in, in similar manners that, that he normally is. It's almost like it's kind of a game that he's playing, not a game, but it, it doesn't quite mean it as much. As he is the the part that really stood out to me was um, uh, verse three at the end of verse three, talking about all the concubines and and he threw them into seclusion, all his mm-hmm. wives and concubines, and never never had intercourse with them ever again. Like, like that kind of sounds to me like he's not doing his job at all. I think he was upset because Absalom had him. Yeah. I mean, part of the king, yeah. but uh, like that's a night, yeah. and that could be, that could be too. But it, quiet revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Going more. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Which the next that? verse, verse four, they talk about three days. Verse four, they talk about three days. Yeah. Call the men of Judah together yeah. within three days, and then he does it meet the time frame, but still, yeah. three days. No, that's that's definitely. So, a woman from the city. The wise woman. We have a woman again in here. <laughs> yeah. No name. I thought walking through the heads from the walls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's the woman, right? There. So it shows that the whole area, Israel and Judah, are they're all going from one side to another. There's no, you know, if we got to throw you over the, to save ourselves, yeah. you're going. Yeah. 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 Like it's not. It's 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 interesting, and I, I keep going back to this. But before the Bathsheba stuff, 
like there's just everything is positive and bringing people together and that that's and you're just not seeing that here and and it's just it's kind of fall falling apart um there's still some good things that are happening um like you have this this lady so yeah what do we think of the lady um that that threw the head over like what's what's going on with that city what's going on with that city is she just being shrewd yeah sure. yeah yeah yeah. All we gotta do is say hall. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But it was real easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. What were we gonna throw into the bus this week? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So but but notice like that was it was Sheba's head, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the same person that David says this guy's gonna cause us more problems than Absalom. Yeah. He wanted to get rid of me. <laughs> Get rid of them anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but who does it though? But who actually gets rid of Sheba? Like it's it's that woman. Yeah, woman or the people? I mean, it's the, 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 the people, are, the people, the the people behind behind the wall there, like that's. But like they're being led by that woman, like over there. Which is, which is that a? Like a um, like a like a converse, uh, like rhyming with like a David and Goliath story, where this guy who's going to cause us more problems than anyone else is is there, and he's taken out by this woman who comes out to the city, and and she you know she's obviously telling someone's like, take off his head and throw it over the wall, you know like that's it, it's kind of odd that she's doing that yeah. she's doing that. You know, that's human shouldn't have power. Yeah. And also how she's describing the city. You know, we we are like a crown jewel, peaceful yes. peaceable and like all all these the these Lord's things. Possession. I don't it's just Yeah, go ahead. My footnote refers back to fourteen. Um basically starting at the beginning of chapter fourteen when it's talking about a wise woman. So is it the same woman? I say it was a wise city. If you go back and read some of the other notes, oh. people came there to, for advice and so on. Okay, I, I can't remember just where in my notes I saw that. So that's um, let's see. So that's at the beginning of um, that's right after the Tamar story. Um, so so the beginning of fourteen. As, um, so Joab, the son of um, perceiving the king's heart, was concerned about Absalom. And Joab went to Tekoa and brought from there a wise woman and said, please pretend to be a mourner. And so like that, so she did that whole thing to kind of trick, trick them into there. Is that that same town? I don't know. Um, this town's got a long name. Yeah, like so. But it does. It's interesting that it does use that same terminology. A wise woman, like I cried, cried out over the wall. So I don't know if it's the same, but it it's definitely using the same terminology to describe to describe her. They also describe cities as a woman. And yeah. In the book. Yeah. Other yeah. Yeah. Usually cities are are uh, gendered feminine. Yeah, uh, gendered. Gendered. Yeah, gendered feminine, tutored. That's what we say in Georgia. <laughs> they, um, but I just thought it was interesting about how how she comes out, and it just seems like there's this. To me, it just seems like there's this mishmash of just things aren't going. It's kind of odd. Things are working out for him, but he, but he's having to. He's going about it differently, kind of more in like a typical power thing. Um, I don't know. Does anyone else have any, any thoughts about this? I'd like to get through 21 before we end today, so we'll go a little late. All right, let's go on to 21. Let's go on to 21. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord... And the Lord answered, It is because of Saul 
and his bloodthirsty house because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And with what shall I make atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? We will have no silver or gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. Whatever you say, I will do for you. As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the territories of Israel, let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord chose. I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So the king took Ammoni and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aja, whom she bore to Saul, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Maholathite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the hill before the Lord. So they fell, all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. Now Rizpah, the daughter of Aja, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven. And she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And David was told what Rizpah, the daughter of Aja, the concubine of Saul, had done. Then David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the street of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hung them up, after the Philistines had struck down Saul in Gilboa. So he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from there, and they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son in the country of Benjamin in Zela, in the tomb of Kish his father. So they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God heeded the prayer for the land. When the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants with him went down and fought against the Philistines. And David grew faint. Then Ishbi Benab, who was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose bronze spear was three hundred shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, came to his aid and struck the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore to him, You shall go out no more with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. Now it happened afterward that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gab. Then Sibachai the Heushathite killed Saph, who was one of the sons of the giant. Again there was war at Gab with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jerry Oregon, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Yet again there was war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number. And he also was born to the giant. So when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Uh -oh.
Oh, well, this is fascinating. It, it kind of makes me think more about thinking about that lady has something to do with David and Goliath as well. But because all of a sudden we're talking about David and Goliath stuff. So. All right. So what what stood out to you in this one? There's there's a lot of stuff going on in this chapter. It's too much. There's too much. <laughs> too, 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 too much. Too much. And found out who M Guy's mother was. Miss Pa. Yeah, okay. Yeah. One of the concubines of Saul. Mm-hmm. And then it, David buries the bows of Saul and Jonathan together with the seven that were just killed. Was so it with that was was it with the seven that were just Yeah. 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 Thirteen they brought up from there to yeah. the bones of Jonathan. They gathered the Oh, I see it, yeah. Yeah. That was a strange ritual, I guess. Well, and and what does it say about God after that happened? He blessed the land after that. Which that's interesting. Why 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 is that written down, do you think? I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> he just ended the drought. Oh yeah, yeah. So like that drought that was it was hitting and the, the the famine, and and that's do what? Yeah, and again, again with the three years, and with the three years, it's one of those numbers. Yeah, you know that it's it's like seven sons. It's, it's like that's yeah seven sons. This is just filled. I mean, you got you got twelves and twenty fours and sixes. What is that three years a choice? Are you do something for a year, something else for two years, or are you going to get famine for three years and it's on a menu as it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like that's it. Like that's yeah something like yeah, think something like that. But it's just it's interesting. Whenever you see those numbers, and it's one of those ones, you're like, hmm. So yeah. what could that what could that mean? Three doesn't come up much in other books of the Bible. Uh, it's been interesting looking at it coming up in the Samuels here, and especially around David. And so, which which I kind of wonder if the story of Jesus is using some of that in the same sense of him being in the tomb. What do you think about famine? You think about like that and connected to the tomb? Like that's kind of, that's some interesting thoughts. There's nothing hardcore there, but... There's definitely some thoughts there. Um, giant thing, yeah. So yeah, the giant. So so part of part of Goliath. That's Goliath's right. sins. Yeah. So it kind so, of turn around again, coming back to them after what David. Yeah. So uh, before we get to that though, um, at the end of chapter uh, verse one, um, the Lord answers David and says it's because the house of Saul and his uh, well, it's because the house of Hall and his bloodthirsty house, he be, you know, he killed the Gibeonites. Like that's, I just thought it was interesting. There's like describing it as this bloodthirsty. But why does that thing. come up now? Yeah. I like mean, why does that come up now? Well, that's let's. Yeah, why does that come up now? Yeah, I want to know. Why? Why? <laughs> why like that? That's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is. Is it? Um, is it connected and kind of, I, I don't know, but is it, is that being brought up again as a way of kind of talking about David's house a little bit and, and, and that, and how David's kind of, you know, what Joab is doing and, and, and things like that. Um, Cause remember, like, like we say at the beginning, even today, David was being a good politician before. And that seems like that has cracked now. Like that's, it's not, it, it's, it's not, it's like this whole, ever since Bathsheba, he's lost, he's lost, lost some of that. Um, let's see. What, what um, it, I also thought it was interesting right at the, 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 right at the end of chapter of verse two, again, it describes Israel and Judah. We, they have been unified right up until the last couple chapters. You're not, we're not hearing them speak spoken of. We may be hearing individual towns and cities, but we're not hearing those regions. Like right. that's, that's, that's interesting. And, um, uh, let's see here. Um, why did I underline this? Um, I don't know why I, I, mem I underlined that. 
And I like that David inquired of the Lord, right? At the beginning, after the because of the famine. Yeah, you do. And that's where he says that whole thing, like Saul back, bloodshed yeah. and all that. Going back to. Um, so they have that one king. Oh, I, I like, I remember like, give us seven men of the descendants of Saul. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Like that's. I mean, they did, I mean, descendants, they didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, that's, that's, that's interesting. And yeah. seven, like seven has that completeness to yeah. it. It's like, we're wiping out Saul type of, type of idea. Um, so so then, but Michael gets involved in all of this. Isn't that one of David's wives? Yeah. And then she couldn't have any more kids. Yeah. 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 So like. That'd be another one. Like she, so she's like one of his wives. Mm -hmm. And, and so she's involved in all of this. They, they hang that. Like it's, it's, it's very, it, it's, it's very, it's. It's it's kind of troubling. Like as I was reading it, it's just like it's like oh, this is yeah. this is kind of weird. This is kind of weird. See know. how rooted the Philistine war with Israel is. Oh yeah, way so, way 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 back. Oh oh like yeah. So does anyone have any thoughts about the the seven or or anything like that? It's just it's an odd part of the story. It just doesn't seem to fit yeah. here. Yeah yeah, and so then we get into the Philistine and we have the kids of Goliath. Like, like, come up, and and they want to kill David. Now, there's one phrase that stood out to me that sounds familiar. Uh, it was verse, um, uh, verse seventeen, and um, let's see. Well, right before it, they said that David was getting weak. Yeah, like that's. Like they, 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 he was feeling weak and they told him, don't come out to battle anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't come out to battle. Anymore. That stood out to me and sounded familiar. Does, does telling a man not to kill Absalom? No, no, no. Does that, does that sound familiar to anyone else? When Saul, when uh, Saul was going to fight the Philistines and the Philistines wanted a champion. No, and I may be wrong on this. No, I may be wrong on this because no one's getting it. Um, it's uh, how it described David right before Bathsheba. That he that this is the time when the when the kings would go to war, and but David was not in battle. He was he was in Jerusalem, and and it's almost like his own. It just kind of sounded familiar to me where. All of a sudden, they make a big deal. It's like, ah, uh, you shouldn't come out to battle with us anymore. Yeah, and I thought he made that because Bathsheba's wife was put to be, I mean, husband was put to be killed. Well, that's well, well, at the very beginning of that story. Here, I'll read it. 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 Um, I'm still in the dark. Why it's, it's captured your your interest? So, right. Super lab on you. I'm, it just sounds familiar. So, um, all right. Like here, I'll read it real fast. Chapter eleven, like verses verse one, and maybe a couple following. It happened in the spring of that year, at the time when when kings go to battle, that David sent Joab his his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon. Da, 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 da. But David remained in Jerusalem. So all these people are going to battle, but he's he's not in battle. He's it's not where himself, he's not he's where himself. yeah he's not where all the kings should be. He's at home, which causes a problem with Bathsheba. It just, to me, and I don't know if it, if it, it's, it just, it was just interesting. Like, like. Well, what's happened in that arc? It's, yeah. Well, and he's gotten older. He's gotten older, but he's also, like, he's not the same king that he once was. Who of us are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so much so that is is um, his. Yeah. Guys are like, you don't need to be on the battlefield. Yeah, they don't want him to get killed. Could yeah. It, could it also be that by saying David was weary, yeah. that, he, that they're implying that he's no longer able to lead because someone else had to come to his aid? Well, I think, I think that's, I think that's some of it. And and remember. What was David like when he killed the Philistine? He wasn't a big man of battle. No. 
kid. He's a kid. Yeah. And, and so, so, so like they're, you know, he's you know, like, we get older and get more feeble yet. That didn't stop it from him defeating the Philistine here. And yet he's having to be saved now. Like, is there, is, is you know, there, is there, it's just, it's giving off to me, it's giving off this sense of like, it's just not the same. It's just yeah. not, not David's not there anymore. Like that, that's, it's kind of going through, going through this story. And it's just like, just have this uneasiness about, about David. I don't know. And that could be me just putting it on there. Well, the, you know, they say in there so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus is going to come from the line of David. Line of David. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether they realize that, I don't know. David, I think, did. But I don't know whether the other people did. Well, and I think, and, and I think it's a good the, calling him the lamp of David. Like that's, you definitely start seeing some, you know, Messiah overtones, and and that's and that is, uh, oh, what chapter is that? Um, like it was like chapter seven ish, I think. Um, Maybe a little bit more. Specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's. The um, so that's the so, so, yeah yeah so chapter seven uh, the guy yeah second Samuel chapter seven and that's where David is like hey I want to build you know I I live in this house of cedar but we want to build God this tabernacle and God's like you don't need me to build you don't need to build a temple for me I'm going to build your house and but I was kind of wondering if that if it talks about light there and it it doesn't it doesn't really but um. But yeah, yeah. So, so, so any, anything else? We're, 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 we're kind of, we got one, we got really one more lesson to go through here. And, um, so, so how, how are you feeling about things so far, about how things have kind of come and gone? Sad. Sad? Sad? I mean, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. It's the arc of life. Yeah, I it's I do think it's interesting. So we basically like there's this praise for God's deliverance mm -hmm. here, um, but this this and then then it gets really weird here in chapter 23, which we'll we'll get to, but but it's kind of the end of David's story here, and it ends almost the same way as it began, where this underpowered guy and, and Goliath, but the, the outcome is different. The out, the outcome is different. And, and so my, my whole point in the sermon series has been like, I think it's profoundly interesting that, that the Messiah, like the, the, the we view is Jesus, you know, the Christ, that he comes through this line and that, I think this stuff is profoundly interesting to read because they could have just kept it where David was doing everything perfect. That could have been what was communicated. And it's not. It's 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 not. You know, David could have his story could have been done and that and that Jesus comes from that from that line, from that lamp you could you could say so it's not through that thing of perfection which the gospel writers end up picking up on this especially luke like luke goes out of its way to list all like the women and prostitutes that are that are in that line and so it, i think it's saying something it's not about the powers and the structures of the world but it's about kind of that young boy that's able to defeat goliath you know um, you know so like that's and so, and that's kind of how kingdom of God stuff works. And we're seeing that, I think the reason why it comes back to the Goliath here at the end is that David, David doesn't stand in the same way as he did when he was a young boy. Huh. And so it's kind of become battles of thing. They still triumph over the Philistines, but it's not, it's not in the same way. And you have that woman who's like, ah, oh, we're a city of peace and all that stuff. And she has no problem getting rid of yeah. the guy they're all worried about. <laughs> There's a which, which is, by what David is saying, is a Goliath to them. 
Like this guy's going to be drawing us more problems than Absalom. And she, there's no battle. Like she goes back into the town and throws his head over. You know, it's, it's anticlimactic, just like Goliath is. That story of Goliath is anticlimactic. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like you, you, you said that. Like that's, and I think that's kind of, kind of, kind of the point of it. And that same thing could happen here with Goliath's sons, and it doesn't. It doesn't. And yet that line continues to go through there because we're going to see this all rhyme again, except not so much with the king and David, but the people of God go into captivity into Assyria and Babylon and all of, all of those things where it looks like it's awful and again and, and they and and they and they go into those and yet still God sustains it and leads through even even through through that stuff and so. I think as we look at our own lives in this, that that's you know, we we we're like, oh, I'm only got my worth when I'm got my strength and you know and and all of that stuff. But we see that God works through even through the struggles, and uh, yeah. So I think we're that's what we're kind of seeing right now. Anyone have any last thoughts? I've gone over about 15 minutes. If Kevin was here today, he'd be already like, you guys are done. <laughs> and you want to say something to you? Too? No. Oh, okay. I just said, I'm, it just, it just, what? the whole thing just kind of gets me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I if I lived back there, I would have had to find a, some hole or some cave yeah. to live in and not be with anybody. Yeah. It might have been the lady throwing her head over the wall. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you now. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, but, but so, and the reason why I'm saying all this, and we'll talk more about this next week. The reason why I'm saying all this is that when you listen to popular Christianity today, that it's all about King Triumphant. And that's really not how any of this is written. Like, look at how Jesus dies. Not in this big triumphant thing, but in a cross. It doesn't look that dissimilar to this. And yet God still sustains and saves his people. Like that's, you see, you're seeing the cross-shaped existence of God existing all throughout these pages. And that's even Revelation. We love to make it into this King Triumphant thing. But remember, the last big triumphant thing that Jesus does, he's already bloody. And it's his own blood. It's not. It's not like a like a decimating king. And it's just different than how everything else is written in in the world and all these books. Not everything's different, but it's just different. So um, yeah. So we'll we'll end there today, and and we will um, we will be we will do the last little bit. The summary. We'll watch next week. We'll watch the. Um, the the Bible project video the whole summary again so to kind of see which way is is going and expect that one to go a little bit longer than noon again to last next week so is that there's gonna be a lot of stuff and I need to bone up for that one because I'm preaching on that one and that needs to be a decent so. <laughs> I like that's I like that that's but uh, but 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 good deal good deal so everyone on YouTube thanks so much for joining us so